Хава, нагила хава, нагила хава, нагила вени смеха. Хава, нагила хава, нагила хава, нагила вени смеха. Хава не ранена, хава не ранена, хава не ранена. When we reach Jerusalem, which of its seven gates shall we enter? How shall we navigate its tangled alleyways, shaped by centuries of processions converging on its holy sites? Church of the Holy Sepulchre, whose grey domes mark the place where many Christians believe Jesus was crucified and resurrected. The massive 2,000-year-old stone platform with its venerated western wall. For Jews, it is where Abraham prepared to sacrifice his son, and Solomon built the first Jewish temple. The top of the stone platform is home to the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, where Muslims believe the Prophet Muhammad was taken in a miraculous night journey and ascended to heaven.
Yo, what up, bro? This is Deshaun. This is Deshaun. <laughs> Welcome to my world. You ready to take a journey? about to go down. Here we are with Rabbi Haim Asa, story number six. Not a very happy story, but an important sto story of our history in the world of Bulgarian Jewry and some very important uh, facts. Rabbi Asa. Thank you, David. Today I would like to talk about the best kept secret of the Holocaust history or Holocaust era, the saving of the Bulgarian Jewish community in its entirety. In March, on March 9th, 1943, the trains were supposed to load us and the trains, unfortunately for the Germans, but fortunately for us, stood there empty and the empty box cars departed empty without any Jewish people. The reason being is that King Boris III, who was the highest authority being a monarchy, um, uh, and the church, the Bulgarian National Church, which is an extension of the Eastern Church, but we have to distinguish here, the Eastern Church in Russia was anti-Semitic. The Eastern Church in Romania was anti-Semitic. The Eastern Church of Bulgaria was not anti-Semitic. As a matter of fact, the, the bishops uh, uh, gathered in Sofia and came up with a document after document. And this is in a compilation which I had recently received from Sofia all the anti, uh, all the decisions of this Holy Synod, S Y N O D, the Holy Synod of Bulgaria passed objecting to the laws and discrimination of the Jewish people and of course vehemently opposed to our resettlement. As a matter of fact, in one town, Plopi, which is the second Jewish community of Bulgaria after Sofia the capital after Sofia the capital uh, Sofia had about 25,000 Jews the, the total number was let's say in round numbers 50 50,000 Sofia had 25,000 Plovdiv was the second biggest was probably uh, 8 uh, to 10,000 and then of course was uh, 20 towns each of them with uh, uh, 500 800, 1000, 1200, etc. Burgas, my own town. By the Black Sea. By the Black Sea. Uh, Burgas, uh, the beautiful city on the Black Sea, had approximately 1000 Jewish people. So, um, indeed, uh, without exaggerating, uh, the, the Bulgarians are people that are warm. They are kind, they are gentle, uh, unless you get on their bad side, of course, and uh, they remember history. And for me, this is very important. Well, this is living history, folks, uh, and uh, I can say something about the Bulgarian people. Uh, not, not that I, uh, I don't like uh, the country I was born in. I have 
great love and I feel very fortunate to have been born in Romania as a Jew. But I am married to a Bulgarian, hence our connection. And like they say in Bulgarian, I learned a little Bulgarian. I had to, my wife. You speak perfect. Well, I don't know about perfect, thank you. But po bulgarski se kazva ti si mnogu skromen čuvek. Uh, which is a very, to me, it's a typical uh, Bulgarian characteristic. I said in Bulgarian that you are a very modest uh, human being. And Thank I can you. attest to that because my wife and her family, my w lovely wife uh, is Bogdana Romanska, and she's the daughter of a famous uh, tennis uh, player, uh, father and mother, the father having been Vladimir Romanski, famous tennis coach of the Bulgarian Tennis Federation, and her mother also a tennis champion, Elena. And my wife, Bogdana Romanska, a lovely, lovely lady, very beautiful, of course, beautiful Bulgarian girls, lady. Uh, I have to say that I love Bulgaria, and everything you said about the Bulgarian people, I have to attest that they are extremely kind and soft. And of course, if you get on the wrong side, like anybody else, they're not going to be happy. But with that said, uh, we wish all the best. Nogu se rad vam de govoris s vas, Rabbi Asa. I feel very lucky and we wish good the luck same. with the project to recognize uh, Dimitar Pesha.
The Syriac Orthodox Church is quite unique for many reasons. Firstly, it presents a form of Christianity which is Semitic in nature with a culture not far from the one Christ himself experienced. Secondly, it employs in its liturgy the Syriac language, an Aramaic dialect akin to the Aramaic spoken by Christ and the Apostles. Thirdly, its liturgy is one of the most ancient and has been handed from one generation to another. Fourthly, and most importantly, it demonstrates the unity of the body of Christ by the multi-ethnic nature of its faithful. The Syriac Orthodox faithful today live primarily in Middle Eastern countries and the Indian state of Kerala, with many communities in the diaspora. The church is present in the Americas and Europe as well. I am Archbishop Severius Melke Murad, Archbishop of the Syrian Orthodox Church in Jerusalem, Jordan, Holy Land. We are present here since 2000 years. Why? Because uh, our Lord Jesus Christ made here, in this place, in St. Mark's convent, in the old city of Jerusalem, he made here uh, the Last Supper, and Holy Spirit came, and all uh, acts happened here, uh, especially uh, for St. Mary and disciples. They were living here many days uh, until uh, our Lord Christ went for the sky to the heaven, day of ascension. And after that, they came here all, St. Mary and disciples, until Holy Spirit came upon them. And from here, the church established it, began from here. And from here, they went to all Jerusalem and Holy Land and all of the world. Our church, from its very inception in the first century, has been called and was known throughout the world only as the Syrian Church. The name Syrian to us does not only designate the name of a country, but also designates the proper name of the church that was established in Syria and used Syriac or Aramaic, the language of the country. Therefore, it became the religious name of our church wherever located in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Turkey, Jordan, Egypt, India, Europe, North and South America, and Australia. This church is the one church that has preserved the ancient culture and language of Syria, together with the valuable literature and liturgies of the ancient apostolic church of Antioch. Apart from sermons, all prayers are sung in the form of chants and melodies. Thousands of tunes and melodies exist here, most of which are unfortunately lost. Still hundreds of melodies remain, and these are preserved in the treasury of tunes, known in Syria as Beth Gazi. The service is in Aramaic, the ancient language of Christ. <laughs> This is the room the Syrian Orthodox believe Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper. But their community, like other Christian ones here, is shrinking. There are just 1,000 Syrian Orthodox families left in the Holy Land. A fraction of the number of years ago. It was lost in the nation makes even the most basic tasks difficult. Problems the clergy try to leave behind them, at least at Christmas time. The next morning, Sunday Mass is held at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is said to mark the place Jesus was crucified. It's the experience of a lifetime for pilgrims like Marcus and his into that time or I regularly visit the service in Germany but this is kind of feel that you are closer as he said to your faith. The Syrian Orthodox
Orthodox believe that this place is sacred for their ministry, which they will bring Mary and the disciples for many years after Jesus' death. And just like the country, the stone walls of this courtyard is so they feel spiritually closer to God. Those who live here, religion provides moments of peace in a place known for centuries before. Theological dialogues with other churches. As a result of these dialogues, the Church has issued two joint declarations with the Roman Catholic Church and another with the Eastern Orthodox Churches. Since uh, 30 years, 1970, 75, and 80, our uh, patriarchs. Father Jacob, the Holy Pope in Rome, uh, to to be one, in, especially in seven sacraments. If uh, if the Catholic Church they haven't a church in the one of the city in Syria and everywhere, and we have Syrian, we can baptize the Catholic uh, children, or give him Holy Communion and what they need, but they will stay Catholic people don't change.